In this series, we showed you exactly what was involved in taking this version of the song. Changing it into this version of the song. Hey, I'm Stevie O, and this is Mystical Lady Productions. Welcome to the final part, part 11 of this series, reproducing Caden Cashmere's The Sweetest Goodbye. In parts 1 through 10, we broke it down from beginning to end what was involved in the production, from sharing the song and our new ideas for the song, sequencing and programming drum parts, recording keyboard parts, bass lines, acoustic guitars, electric guitars, lead guitars, background oohs and ahs, and background vocals over the course. And now I'm going to share with you some of the mixing techniques, ranging from automation, audio editing, to how I get the drums, particularly my snare, to sound the way it does, final mix of the drums, mixing all the vocal parts, and a few other little techniques that I like to use. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Let's get to work. All right, now what I've got uh, to show you is my four snare sounds here. Okay, I've got four different sounds. Two of them I took off my Roland Integra. This one Simmons snare and this white noise are ones that I captured from another source and I triggered them. Triggered sounds in a library, uh, actually the, the Simmons snare, it's not really a snare, it's more of a kick, it's more of a Simmons kick and uh, I incorporate it into these other sounds. This white noise is just kind of a noise. I'll show you each individual sound. This is the studio snare. Now the jazz snare. It's a little different. Here's that Simmons. And the white noise. I want to combine them, okay? And that's how I get my big fat sound. Now you come over here to the bus of just snare, okay? And what I got on here is I've got it EQ'd over here in the far corner, but I also use CLA drums, the snare sound. And I'll turn that on to show you what it sounds like. Yeah. That CLA drums for the snare gives it, I chose uh, the reverb I want. It's it's a hall. It's one of Chris Lord Algae's hall reverbs that he uses. It's in the plug-in. All right, here's the CLA drums plug-in. When you, when you pull it up, got all kinds of goodies to choose from. You can, you can have Chris's selections as far as the EQ, and then you could adjust the low end and the high end. You can also use his compressor that he puts in there. You have the option of turning them off and you have the option of going to some different effects and settings that he uses. This is that hall reverb I was telling you about here. Fit as much or as little as you want. And he also has this gate, which can be very handy. All right. And then you have your choice of selecting snare, you know, kick, toms, overheads, the room. That's what I use a little later when I do my uh, room send on the master bus of the drums. That's how I get it. Combining the four, taking out those mids, add, adding a nice little shelf on the top, and adding, I like to add about 165 hertz uh, to the bottom end of my snare. And then I'll do a high pass filter up to about uh, 125 or so. All right, now getting on to the rest of the drums. These are all the drums after I have processed them and bust them and sent them to various effects. But here's what I have when I have all the drums mixed down together. And what I then do is I send these two sends. I've got my nuke send with the Tkelikoff TDR compressor on there, and when I nuke it, this is what it does to the drum. It just squashes it to death. This is that Tokyo Dawn Katelnikov. <laughs> Hope I pronounced that right. 
there's the plugin. It's got a great setting. It's got this drum smasher, sets the attack at 0.22 milliseconds, 50 millisecond release. And then I just overdo the threshold on it and give it just a boatload of gain reduction. And then I will add a drum room send again with a CLA drums. And I'm basically just looking for his club reverb out of that. And I'll blend that in gradually too. And now here's just the room sound. So I go to my all drums dry. I add in the nuke underneath it. And I add the room. Sign up for the YouTube channel, get some notifications, of course, because I'll be going into some of this in more detail. You know how I actually compress and EQ into independent components of the drums to get those to independently sound the way they do but in a nutshell that's what I do is I combine all four sounds get them down to one I do the same with the kick drum I use about four different three or four different sounds of kick drum sounds blend them send them to a bus process it on the bus and uh, once I've got the mix of the entire drum kit then I send it I send them to a, a nuke and a drum room sound. Depending on the song and the kind of genre it is, those things can vary. But for this song, a nice heavy rock ballad, I wanted that big fat drum sound and uh, I think I was able to accomplish that. And I'm going to show you what I do to do some automation. I had to do this in the beginning of the song where the acoustic guitars come in. I'm going to change screens here. And these are all my individual tracks, okay? The actual recorded audio. Now, if I go down here and pull this screen up like so, this shows all my buses. All the reds are all the drum buses. Okay, what I'm concerned with right now is the acoustic guitar. Let me blow this up for you. Got a synth intro, which I already automated. Comes in from silence and comes in loud and then dies out all of a sudden, like so. And then the piano comes in. I've got the piano automated to come in about two decibels lower than where it is when the first course starts, and then it goes up to zero dB from there. What I'm gonna be doing is bringing in the acoustic guitars. I'll show you two ways that I do automation here. I go back to my mixing board. I can go over here, to acoustic guitars which is in the purpley pink now I could simply hit the right button right there press play and automate right from here just hold click and hold now you won't hear any guitars right now bring them in Now let's go back to the other screen. I'll show you what it actually did here on the purple line. All that leverage movement I was doing created this yellow line. Very inconsistent. You can, you can use it that way for some things, but other things, if you want a nice smooth transition, doing it manually like that isn't always the best way to go. Delete this envelope and go back. Now I'll show you what I do. I'm going to start the song off, and the first thing I'm going to do is bring this lever down to negative 12. And then I'm going to use another feature for automation to gradually, smoothly bring it back up to zero. So here I go. I start the song, bring it back down to 12, go back to here. This is where I brought it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a node right there, and I'm going to raise the level up. to zero. Now when it fades in, it'll fade in nice and smooth for me. 
Now I'll end up doing that with the bass part too because the bass is a little loud there. I'll go in there and I'll adjust it because there's a lot of little lead bass things going on that I don't want to be overbearing, but at points I want them to stick out. So what I'll do is I'll do that with the automation, probably just using the lever like here over on the yellow track here at the bass. There's going to be some discrepancy where I go up and down, you know, maybe 2 or 3 dB in each direction. And that's how I do automation. All right, this is a little something I like to do to make the vocals nice and tight. It's through some editing. Now, I'm on uh, Diane's oohs and ahs background here, these six tracks here. Now, as you can tell, each track kind of starts off at a different spot, you know. They come in at different places. What I like to do is I like to create a split. I'll put my line right here in the middle. And I'll do something like this, something to this effect. I'll make a split on each of these tracks. Just splice them right down the side there, right all in the exact same spot. And I'll go back, and I'll just delete out. And then I'll come in, and I'll do just a little bit of a fade. Let me blow that up for you, show you here what I do with this fading tool here. Just come in ever so slightly like that on each of the tracks so that the phrase the word all starts at the same time now, I'll do this with my background vocals too and then what you end up having is the background vocals instead of coming in at separate little times they come in all at the same time <laughs> I'll do the same thing on the very ends, okay, where the fade is at the very end. Blow them up and do the same thing here. I'll make a split, 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 and go to the tail end of the phrase, get rid of them, and do the same thing on these and just take a nice little... Now the reason you want to use this tool and do a slight little fade in like that or a fade out is because if you don't, you have the chance of risking a pop or click sound. I do this on all my edits, whenever I'm deleting or erasing. Yes, yeah, so, because sometimes, you know, you might have some drums and you're using a gate. Maybe you're trying to remove some audio, you know, a glitch, a, a noise, a breath, whatever. You can't get rid of it with a noise reduction or with a gate. So I'll go in there and I'll manually, you know, chop it, delete it out, but then those edges of the two pieces of audio that are remaining do an ever so slight volume fade because that that prevents any any noise from building up creating pops and problems and clicks and things that could be compressed and put effects on and then they become bigger problems than they really need to be so that's what i do all right bring your attention to the center of the screen here where i've got the lead vocal bus channel highlighted. I'm going to show you the effects I run and how I run them to my sends. What exactly I do with not just lead vocal but also the backing vocal track here and the oohs and ahs in the background. All right aside from the actual mix and the balancing and the panning I'm going to go more specifically what I do as far as the buses go. Now over here to the left are my effect sends for the vocal. I've got a voice slapback one, a vox slapback two, quarter delay, a half delay, and a vox modulation. I've got my sends right here in the bus. Okay, I've got four of them. I've got right here is the vo vocal slap one, slap two, a delay half, and a delay quarter. On my actual send channels, I've got kilohertz. One of my favorite plugins. I love the delay on this. Open it up here, and this is what it shows you. It's got a ping pong you can use. It's got the mixing dial, feedback, panning, ducking. I got this as my first slap back, and I got it set just under what is 36 milliseconds. My Vox Slapback 2 is set for about 72 milliseconds. My quarter delay set at about 429, 430-ish. My half delay is twice that at 860. Now also I've got what is called Vox Modulation, and I use a kaleidoscopes for this particular song. It is by Waves Kaleidoscope, and I chose a nice combination of a modulator of a chorus and a flange. I'll be showing you that later in the background vocal tracks that I did. And also here on the lead vocal, I have my Cakewalk Breverb, which is looking like that. And with the Breverb and this plate reverb, I actually did some 
automation in the very beginning of the song where there's not a lot of music going on. It's just her voice. And later I took the reverb off the voice as the instrumentation got more intense. Now right, we're going to solo the lead vocal. The lovely Caden Cashmere and her beautiful voice here with no effects at all. It's the sweetest goodbye. As dry as it can be. I want to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn on this vocal back slap here. This Vox Slap 1. Now that's the one that's set at 36 milliseconds. I'm going to exaggerate it to show you the effect. And I have it panned all the way to the left. I got the Vocal Slap 2 at 72 milliseconds. It's panned all the way to the right. And I'll show you the effects in a dramatic style. And then uh, tone it back a little bit to show you what I really want in the end. So we got the vocal. It's the sweetest goodbye. Add the effect. See what that does? I can't leave you behind. Let's bring it back down. But I can't seem to find. Here's the second slap. You. Too. See, that's you got more. That that's got more of a delay in it. The first one is very, very faint of a delay. And the second one, you could actually really hear the delay. But you don't want to go overboard on this. So from one extreme... To the other, it goes like this. It's the sweetest goodbye with fear in my mind. I'll turn it back bound by half. I can't leave you behind, but I can't seem to find. Now what that is doing is just, it's, it's fattening up the vocal a little bit, and it's giving it just a little bit of width. Now the next thing is my delay, my first delay. I call, call it the quarter delay, quarter note delay. And I've got it panned to the left. It's the Turn that off. Here's the half delay. I could come over here to the left and I could actually control with these levers over here how much of that delay. I could also do it right from the dial here. Try it from that top again. It's the This is everything on. But I can't seem to find my place on alongside you. Bring in the music. Now, I'll show you what I did with this uh, effect on the reverb in the very beginning of the song. All right, here we're back with the reverb, the reverb on my lead vocal. As I press play up here, you're going to watch the automation already starting to take effect here. <laughs> there you go. Broken, beaten down, drowning in your tears. Just a nice plate reverb for the intro. And your heart's burned out, doubt, doubt. Feels like nothing's left Chasing to become a warrior Being something that you're not Watch this Forcing the thought You have to try so hard Okay, just that one line I want to add a little extra reverb Make it sound a little more distant Did that with the faders Let the automation take over from that part up And of course the um, Nova with the de -esser. Show, show you real quick. Nothing, nothing it's the See a ducking on that S? It's the so, so those S's aren't so sharp. And that's it. Four delays, a reverb, and a de -esser on the lead vocal. And I'll show you what I did with the uh, background vocals. Now what I did with the background vocals bus, uh, similar to what I did with the lead vocal, except I panned the delays in the opposite 
of what I did with the lead vocal. So if the slap back one was panned left on the lead vocal, on the background vocals, I've got a panned opposite, right? Same with all the other delays, quarter delay and the half delay. They're panned opposite each other. And also what I added, what I do typically to my background vocals is not only add a chorus or a flange kind of effect. In this case, I showed you earlier the kaleidoscopes. Uh, there's another Blue Cat plugin that's for free that works excellent too. I use that quite often. But I like to use the relay. This is actually a uh, Ozone 9 plugin, and what I like to use it for is both for putting tracks into mono, but also to widen the stereo width of the vocal. And I'll show you show you how I do that. All right, here's the old relay by Isotope. It's pretty cool. It's set at 0% right now. I'll show you. There, there's two ways I actually use this. I use this earlier in my mix when I'm uh, putting all my tracks into mono. Here's all the background vocals it's right now. It's the sweetest goodbye with fear in my mind. It's in stereo. I'm going to go super wide with this to show you the effect. It's the sweetest goodbye with fear in my mind just went extreme left and extreme right behind. back to mono but I can't seem to find back out my place alongside you now what I like to do fire's burned out too. find a nice little happy you medium right there put it at about 50% it's the goodbye. okay here we are back on my board here in background vocals gonna add just the slapbacks, just like we did on the lead vocal. Show you it's what it's the doing. sweetest goodbye with fear in my mind. Crank them up loud here. Yeah. I can't leave you behind, but I can't seem to find. A little too much, huh? My place alongside you. Look at that that there. fire's burned out too. Yeah, we'll bring you in the... You say that you're fine. It's the sweetest goodbye. It's the sweetest goodbye. I'll bring in the lead vocal. With the fear in my mind, I have to leave you behind. Now let me go back and show you what the modulation does. Now this is the kaleidoscopes. It's the sweetest goodbye. Turn the other ones With off. Fear in my mind, Just the modulation. I can't leave you behind, but I can't seem to find. It's very coarsey. I like to have a nice you bit of it. All right, now to the ooze. With the ooze, I like to s set up that relay up here super wide. So with the background ooze and ahs, we got the relay. We're going to go extreme. I'm going to go 100% wide. And the vocal slaps a little wider than normal. And same with the modulation and a delay. The ooze sound beautiful like this. Here's without it. Pretty boring. And here's nice and wide. Bring in our slap backs. Our modulation from the course. And some delay. church like right That just shows a few of the techniques that I use in this song and many other of the songs that I produce here at Mystical Lady Production. Hey, I'm Stevie O. It has been an absolute blast doing this project. And once again, a thank you to Warren Hewitt and the staff, produced like a pro, for letting this happen and making this a reality on YouTube. Hope to see you in the next series. Going to be working on a lot more 
uh, productions and given some techniques and showing you how I do things here. So uh, any comments, I'd appreciate it in the section below. Hey, and keep making music and uh, have a great day. All right, take it easy. Thank you.